going on three years now. And um, prior to that, I was a, a classroom teacher. I taught high school English um, at a small school in Eastern Iowa, East Buchanan, go Bucks. Um, after that, I became an instructional coach and did that uh, for about six years, working with a consortium of schools, primarily on implementing standard-based grading practices. And uh, that's really where my um, path with JMC began uh, as a teacher user with JMC, and then as an instructional coach, helping uh, my fellow teachers uh, implement standard-based grading practices and uh, using JMC as our student information system for doing so. And um, I am happy to uh, be here today to bring you this exciting webinar on tracking uh, standards results in a system that is more designed for course grades. So if your school is trying to find a balance between competency-based grading and traditional letter grades, you're in luck. With the JMC grading system, you can easily track progress on standards and provide valuable feedback to students while still being able to report out letter grades for college applications and GPAs. The CBG module streamlines the process, allowing teachers to convert standard-based progress uh, into a final letter grade without having to enter the data twice or do any manual calculations. Today's webinar in the six ways of grading series will guide you through using CBG to calculate a course grade that takes into account both competency-based grading and traditional letter grades. So you'll, we'll start by setting up the standards-based grades cutoffs. Um, we'll set up the CBG module to report course grades and uh, a little bit about the uh, calculation options in JMC CBG module, which I believe uh, sets this grading module apart from others. Uh, and uh, I'll explain a little bit uh, why when we get into that. And then I'll show you how to score formative assessments in competency-based grading to provide students with the feedback to move learning forward. <clears throat> As always, if you have been a part of these, uh, we will be uh, utilizing that Q&A chat feature in the webinar toolbar. So if you have uh, a need to communicate with me, I'm flying acapella, flying solo with this uh, today. So um, I'll be keeping an eye on your questions. And um, as you have those, please feel free to chime in. Jumping right into it, setting standard-based grades cutoffs. Teachers using JMC's competency-based grading module to record formative assessment results and report end-of-term course grades, as is common in most uh, middle school and high school settings, will need to set up grade cutoffs appropriately. CBG results will then be calculated to produce an end-of-term course grade, which is helpful for determining class rank and GPA for college admission, along with honor roll status and um, all of those things that you would use traditional letter grades for. Um, log into JMC Teacher and head to Scores Grade Cutoffs to get started. Step one, you'll select the course for which to enter grade cutoffs from the courses list. Step two, um, you'll add the grade cutoff link. You'll click that add grade cutoff link to begin adding a new cutoff row. Helpful tip, if your administration has dictated grade cutoffs for the entire school, you can click that add default cutoffs link to add uh, that set of cutoffs to your class and then skip the remaining steps. Um, so a little bit of a shortcut there if everybody is utilizing the same grade cutoffs, you can use that default cutoffs and then you're done setting your grade cutoffs. Step three, select the grade a student can earn from the drop-down list, from the grade, that first grade drop-down list there, and enter the minimum point value uh, to earn the grade in the cutoff field. Step four, you'll click the save link to record the new cutoff or click the cancel link to discard your changes. A few helpful tips when converting 12 letter grades, such as A, A minus, B plus, B, B minus, C plus, C, C minus, uh, all the way through to match competency-based grading proficiency scales with four values in the CBG results box, the grade cutoffs should equal those ratios with F having a grade cutoff of zero. 
an A would have a grade cutoff of uh, 3.75 or whatever value your district decides should equal an A and everything else would fall between. Um, to go into this a little bit more in depth, the biggest difference between a standard-based system, uh, any standard-based grading system, and what I would call the traditional points and percentages uh, is these grade cutoffs right here. Um, if you are uh, one that you maybe in, in a past life utilized uh, traditional points and percentages, uh, one of the things that you might have done is like an A is 93%, an A minus is 90%, a B plus is, um, you know, 88% or whatever your percentages were. And then you use the point values to convert into those percentages. One of the um, pieces of research that came out that uh, supports standard based grading um, actually promotes the use of a, a, a grade scale that avoids that uh, 59 and under that zero uh, to failure range, which um, typically skews a student's GPA or a, a student's results course um, uh, assignment score results into an overall course grade uh, negatively and a lot of times unjustly. So uh, that's one of the grading practices that was uh, revolutionized with standard based grading procedures and in JMC you can define those cutoffs as such. It's actually a, a Robert Marzano study um, that, that kind of lays out what those cutoffs should be for a four point system. Obviously, if you're using a three point system or a two point system, it might be a little bit different. Um, regardless, your, uh, your final grade value should be zero. Um, that would be an F. And if you are interested, um, Robert Marzano did a study, uh, Formative Assessments and Standards-Based Grading, uh, published in 2010 uh, from Bloomington in the resource, uh, Research Laboratory for Marzano. So um, you can check that out. I can also show you a blog written by Matt Townsley here in the great state of Iowa uh, about those grade cutoffs as well. Uh, step five, you'll continue adding grade cutoffs until all letter grades and point values have been entered for the class. And uh, like I mentioned before, the final grade cutoff should be zero, as is uh, typically a failing grade. Step six, you'll place a check mark in the use point value grade scale checkbox to calculate using formative assessment point values instead of percentages. So this is just telling the program right here that we are going to bypass percentages. So 3.75 is not a percentage. Um, it's a point value with the highest value being a four. So in step seven, you will enter the highest CBG value in the grade scale max field to enter the maximum score allowed for C in CBG formative assessments. Step eight, you'll click the okay button to save your CBG changes. And then step nine, you'll click the copy button to duplicate the current grade cutoffs to your other classes. Um, some helpful tips with that. Uh, step, well, step 10, you'll select the courses to which to copy the current grade cutoffs using the pop-up list of courses. And uh, you can select all or you can uh, use the control key or the command key when clicking uh, classes to select uh, specific courses to copy. Uh, step 11, click the OK button to copy the grade cutoffs to selected classes or click the close button if you'd like to cancel. So um, if you are experimenting with uh, competency-based grading, uh, conversion to a letter grade for some of your courses, but not all, you can have multiple cutoffs in uh, JMC. So uh, that's a little bit about how you would establish them. Let's take a live look quickly. Um, I've already set this up. I'm in JMC teacher and I'm gonna head to scores, grade cutoffs, that's scores, grade cutoffs. I'm gonna start by clicking a uh, class here in the courses list. So my eighth grade science class is what I'm gonna be using for fourth quarter. That's my example. And you can see I've already uh, establish the grade cutoffs. Um, one of the uh, tools that I use is this uh, Matt Townsley. Um, this is a, a blog post from all the way back in 2019. Uh, how do teachers determine letter grades and GPAs from standards? And um, this resource uh, lists those Marzano grade cutoffs. 
And uh, I kind of refer back to this. So you can see according to the Marzano cutoffs, anything between a 3.75 and a 4.0 translates to an A+. Plus. So actually he has 13 points in his um, cutoffs, uh, his conversion scale. And then anything below would be an F. While in JMC, what we, what we determine is our lowest value possible. So you can see here that our lowest value of an F is zero. But what we're saying is everything between a 0.999 and a zero is actually going to be an F. Um, we've selected that point value grade scale with a max of four and clicked to OK. Any questions about establishing grade cutoffs in JMC? This is a, a practice that would be familiar to you if you've used traditional grades um, and are, are making the change to uh, using CBG. Uh, with that, let's take a look at setting up the CBG module to report course grades. Calculating summative results from competency-based grading takes some basic setup, and let's break that setup into three parts. It's defining your proficiency scale, adding an assessment area, and adding a formative assessment, or adding multiple formative assessments. So, uh, defining your proficiency scale starts out, a uh, proficiency scale is made up of multiple assessment proficiencies or results. Define your possible proficiencies to ensure a complete scale. So uh, typically, uh, teachers using a standard-based grading system will report out on one of four results, or a one through four, four, three, two, one. Possibly, uh, when you get right down to competency-based grading and, and what it is, uh, you're just relaying to the students, do you have it or don't you have it? Do you understand it or don't you understand it? So it's a one or a two. Either you get it or you don't quite get it yet. Um, so with whatever your proficiency scale is, if it's a four, three, two, one, or if it's a got it, don't got it, or if it's a, a one or a zero or a two or a one, uh, we'll start out by establishing your proficiency scale. So we'll head to Competency-based grading, define formative assessments in JMC Teacher. Step one, we'll select the course from the courses drop-down list to begin setting up results and adding assessments for a course. Step two, we'll select a number from the number of results drop-down list to begin creating the standard-based result definitions. Fun fact, the number of results refers to how many proficiencies are in your proficiency scale. For example, if your proficiency scale is meets, developing, beginning, and incomplete, you'll select four in the number of results. Helpful tip, include an extra result to include an exempt option on your proficiency scale to define a result that won't count in proficiency calculations. And um, we'll, we'll talk about how you might utilize an exempt category um, in just a little bit here. Uh, step three, you'll click the edit link next to a proficiency row to begin defining a result in your proficiency scale. So after you've selected the four, our four results will populate down here and we need to define what each of these results are going to be. You define them by selecting a color from the color picker to correspond with your competency-based grading results. And this is extremely helpful for uh, not only teacher grade books, but also JMC student, JMC family, where uh, families and students are keeping track of uh, where their proficiencies are in the course. Step five, you'll enter an abbreviation, three letters or fewer, in the name column to create a display name for the result. For example, met, dev, or beg, you know, met for meeting, dev for developing, BEG for beginning, or some folks even put the numbers straight in here. So if you're just on a four, three, two, one scale, you can put that in the name and it's also gonna show up in the value uh, column as well. Uh, step six, you'll enter a number in the value column to set a ranking order for your proficiency scale. So while these might be thought of as points, um, they're not necessarily points in the sense that they accumulate uh, or we're even taking a percentage from these points. This value just establishes a ranking for each of these uh, results. So uh, 4321 scale becomes pretty easy. You know, 4321, 4321, these match. But, um, you know, if meeting is higher than developing and if developing is higher than beginning, we just need to rank those in the value 
column. Step seven, enter a description for the result in the description field to correspond with your competency-based results. So this is letting your families and your students and everybody know what this level of proficiency means. So if you receive a four in my scale, you are meeting grade level standard. Few helpful tips, place a check mark in the exempt checkbox to create an option for an incomplete or insufficient information or not turned, yet, not turned in yet uh, result to communicate the information to all stakeholders without being punitive. So uh, one of the, the ideas behind standard-based grading is grades should not be punitive. Um, if uh, a kid did not turn in an assignment, it's not necessarily, um, we don't necessarily want to reflect that in the overall course grade, but we want to draw attention to that behavior. So, um, you know, in, in teacher conferences or uh, anything like that, we might, we might include an exempt category to draw attention to work that had not been completed. Um, we're still taking the proficiency, the highest proficiency attained or an average of the most recent, or, you know, we'll, we'll get into the calculation options in just a second. But uh, another thing uh, or another reason I find the exempt category uh, valuable is sometimes not, not every student needs to be assessed uh, the same way and the same number of times in a standard-based system. So if you have a student that, um, has tested out of a standard. For example, they've provided enough evidence to let you know that, hey, this, this student gets it and they aren't gonna get it any more than what they currently get it right now because what they're getting it at is the highest level possible. I might include uh, an exempt category for exempt tested out or exempt past it, um, what, whatever that, that description could be. And I could have multiple exempt categories in here, but that allows me to give feedback so my, uh, my families know and my students know exactly where we stand with this uh, opportunity uh, to show uh, learning. You know, a lot of times what happens is a family sees um, something in the grade book that's not marked and they instantly think, well, what is my kid not doing? Uh, in this case, this allows you to communicate that your kid's doing exactly what they need to be doing, or in this case, your kid's not doing what they need to be doing so that we can draw attention to those behaviors. Um, other helpful tip, place a check mark in the proficiency target checkbox uh, to set the result as the proficiency target used in conjunction with the proficiency target number calculation option. And I'm going to get into that in just a, a little bit with this um, proficiency target, but in general, whatever I am dictating as a teacher is my level of proficiency, whatever would indicate that the kid is on track or is meeting the grade level standard, that's where I will place the targeted proficiency. I know there's a, a, a healthy debate out there about whether to include advanced proficiency uh, in your proficiency scale. You know, I was never one to do that, but I have colleagues that were. So either way, um, if, if your highest level of proficiency exceeds what the targeted proficiency is, you can move that targeted proficiency down to say meeting and then have an exceeds that's even higher. Um, that's up to you and your um, philosophical approach to standard-based grading. Step eight, click the update link to save the result or click the cancel link to discard your changes and then uh, copy that um, proficiency scale to all of your classes. So, um, you know, this is one of those things that you set it once, usually at the beginning of the year, uh, you copy your results or you, you copy your scale to the rest of your courses, because for the most part, if you're using standard-based grading or competency-based grading, you're going to be using the same results for each of your uh, courses. So you literally set this up one time a year, you copy them to all your classes, and then it's done. So let's take a live look at defining your proficiency scale. I'm gonna jump back into JMC teacher. So, um, you know, I just finished up establishing my grade cutoffs. I'm going to go home and then I'm going to head to competency-based grading, define formative assessments. So here I've selected the course. Um, it's my eighth grade science course that I'm going to be using for demonstration purposes. On the right-hand side here, you'll see uh, the number of results uh, I've selected is five. Um, when I get to this page initially, let's see if I can come to someplace that doesn't have any results. Um, 
it's just going to look like this. It's going to be plain. You're, you're not going to see anything over here. And then when you add a number to this, you're going to see five results that have not been defined yet. There's nothing in the description. There's nothing in the name or the value. Um, you simply click the edit link to edit the row. You'd select a color, you'd name it, you'd enter the value. Um, there's no reason uh, to enter a standard-based result definition unless you are um, using a standard-based report card. Uh, we have a, another video uh, in the six ways of grading for utilizing a standard-based report card um, to report your results. So. Uh, since you're just reporting a course grade, there's no reason to define that. It's what you did in the standard in the uh, grade cutoffs. If this is your targeted proficiency, place a check mark here, add the description. And then click the update link. So um, a, a few points of emphasis here. If you have multiple teachers in your building using competency based grading, I would highly recommend getting them all on the same page so that their results look the same. It just uh, streamlines that reporting and it, it helps keeps, uh, keep your, your families all on the same page with what it is you're trying to do with standards-based grading. Uh, I'm really pushing our dev team to develop a way to create uh, this proficiency scale in the office so then we can just add the, the default proficiency scale just like we did with the default cutoffs. But um, that might be something that comes out here. Uh, in the future. So anyway, after you are completely finished, your results should look like this. You'll notice I have different results for each of these, um, different colors represented, uh, different descriptions, different values, and, and this is completed. I, am, I do have an exempt category. You don't necessarily have to have one, but um, I would recommend it. Hmm. So yeah, any questions on establishing your proficiency scale in JMC Teacher? Do not see anything coming through, so I am going to keep rolling right along. The next two steps kind of go hand in hand, adding an assessment area uh, and adding a formative assessment. An assessment area is the logic container for multiple formative assessments. Uh, create an assessment area to tie them together. So essentially it acts as a category, if you will, um, I, depending on the area um, that you're working in. If it's math, you might have a number of assessment areas like order of operations and you know maybe uh, geometry principles or algebraic principles. Or if you are uh, an ELA English um, teacher like myself, you might have reading, you might have writing, you might have reading informational texts, you might have um, reading uh, fictional texts. So um, the assessment areas I've seen even organized by unit, um, you might have some more challenges uh, in, in adding standards when adding this by unit. But if that works for, your, for you and your system, I would encourage you to, to do so and maybe even experiment with the best way of, of grouping your um, formative assessments. Step one, you'll click the add button next to the assessment area drop down list to enter a new standard or new assessment area. Step two, you'll enter a standard name in the assessment area name field to create a new assessment area to be assessed. Um, so uh, another way of thinking about this is if you have uh, learning targets, several learning targets that are derived from a standard, like you've unpacked a standard so that um, you, you have maybe several different targets, you could put your standard in this assessment area and then your formative assessments become your learning target uh, or your learning targets. That's completely up to you and how you would decide to, to organize your grade book. Um, but this next step is the most important step for calculating um, your, your results to a course grade. Step three, you'll choose the calculated to an assignment score radio button in the assessment area type box to use the CBG module to calculate a letter grade. So these other two results, a formative result does not calculate a result at all. It does not go to a standard based report card. It does not go to a letter grade. It's just purely formative. I see a lot of folks use this for behaviors. I see a lot of special education folks use this for IEP goals. It's something that does not have a grade to it. 
the benchmark result reports out to a standard-based report card. Uh, so the, the third option calculated to an assignment score re, uh, reports to a course grade. It just indicates that this assessment area is going to contribute to a course grade. Um, you'll also see a category weight, and this is set up by default to be even because if you're assessing standards, most of the time, I would say each of those standards contributes evenly to an overall course grade. Um, that category weight is uh, a ratio, so it's in comparison to the other standards that are listed or the other assessment areas that are listed. So if you had an assessment area that weighed twice as much as the others, um, you might enter a two in that category weight field, and then everything else would have a one. Um, but that's, that's totally up to you. Um, usually, and that's why the default is set to one, usually they're weighed the same. Click the save button to save the assessment area or click the close button to discard your changes. Um, that's that fun fact is I just got ahead of myself there. Uh, the Paul Freed special uh, that's just explaining that category weight. And let's take a live look at adding an assessment set. So I've created my proficiency scale. I've got my course. So I'm going to click the add button. I'm going to select calculated to an assignment score. I'm going to enter my category name. In this case, since I'm talking eighth grade science, uh, asking questions and defining problems is one of my domains. So I add that to the assessment area list. I can come in here and I can select multiple assessment areas as needed. Any questions on adding an assessment area? Again, it's a logic container that holds all of the formative assessments that go with it. If you want to think of this as a domain and each of these would be the standards that are assessed in that domain, be my guest. Um, if you want to think of this as a, the standard, you could enter the standard here and then each of the learning targets that contributes to that standard would be listed here. It's kind of up to how you want to um, enter that information. So not seeing any questions. So we will get into adding a formative assessment. A formative assessment is the learning target that contributes to the standard or assessment area. You can add multiple formative assessments or learning targets for the assessment area or standard to form a learning progression. Step one, you'll click the add button below a formative assessment box to add a formative assessment for the selected assessment area. Step two, you'll enter a formative assessment name for the current assessment area or uh, in the formative assessment field to associate the assessment with a standard. Um, and I've, I've listed this as an ICANN statement. Um, so you can certainly think of it as, as a target. You could enter a standard name in here. Um, this is just what I am uh, formatively assessing my students on. So whatever piece I am formatively assessing my students on will go in here. Step three, you'll select a radio button next to the appropriate option in the calculate options box to set the calculation option that best fits your grading philosophy. And we'll go over those in depth. Um, there are four calculation options. And um, all this is saying is my end result, uh, whatever gets reported out at, to the, the course grade category is going to come from whatever calculation option I've selected here. Uh, step four, you'll select the number of times you are formatively assessing the learning target from the number of assessments drop down list to create multiple assessment opportunities for your students. So uh, you might not know how many times you're going to assess this um, ICANN statement throughout the term or this target or the standard throughout the term. You can always come back and add to this number, but I know I'm at least going to be assessing it one time probably two times with a, a pre-assessment and a post-assessment. I can always come back to this, as I mentioned, and add to that number of assessments as needed. Um, this is how I would handle reassessment opportunities as well. One of the great principles behind uh, standard-based grading is that you allow students uh, opportunities for reassessment. If they show you that, if, if they've taken an assessment or you've made an assessment of their work and you see that they don't quite have it, uh, you're not just going to leave that standard and, you know, go on to other things. You're going to reteach and come back around to this standard um, 
and assess it as many times as you need to. And that's where those exempt options can come in handy because I might need to add, you know, a third or fourth or fifth or sixth assessment so that all of my students have the, the opportunity to show their highest level of proficiency. But if I've got a kid that's, you know, I assess them two or three times and they've shown me all along the way that they've got it, I don't need to continuously reassess that student. I can select the exempt um, result for those students for those assessments and just assess the students that I need to. Uh, click the save button uh, to save your, your results and uh, click the cancel or click the cancel button to discard your changes. And once you have added a formative assessment, they'll appear in that drop down list. So um, for my assessment area of asking questions and defining problems, again, I'm under competency-based grading, define formative assessment. So all this stuff is done on the same page. I choose the assessment area, click the add button, and I'm going to enter the standard that I'm working on here. So ask questions, asks questions about data to determine factors that strength of electricity. And magnetic factors. This is an NGSS standard. And you know, as an, an efficiency freak, what I have would have done as a teacher is I would have had a Google Doc or you know, some sort of a document that had all of the standards that I was assessing throughout the year. And I would just copy and paste those into JMC as I entered them for my term. Uh, I select a date. Um, so we're going to maybe end assessing uh, assessments on 526. I uh, select a calculation option. Um, I was always the most recent guy, and we'll get into this in just a second. So I'm going to take the most recent score, and I know I'm going to assess this three times. At, at minimum three times, I might end up assessing it more. Click save, and it adds that formative assessment or that it adds that standard um, to the list of formative assessments. These are the things that I'm going to be formatively assessing throughout the term. So if I have more standards that link to this asks questions and defines problems or asking questions and defines problems, I would enter them continuously or keep adding them until I have all of mine in this formative assessments list. Any questions about adding formative assessments before we get into the calculation options? Because those are ever so important and they are right on their way. So seeing no questions, we're gonna jump right into understanding CBG calculation options. And this is what I feel is really revolutionary about uh, this product. We're not taking a total number of points, adding them together and spitting out a, a number that is your course grade. We're actually taking a look at each of those standards and the proficiencies. Um, and, and we are uh, very intelligently deciding where our students should be um, grade wise as a result of their standards proficiencies. So a key feature of the competency-based grading module is the calculation options. The versatility of JMC's CBG calculation options allow teachers of any philosophy to put best practice into action. So whether you're calculating CBG results to a course grade or a standard-based report card, these calculation options will help you give students the feedback they need to move learning forward, and it will result in the most accurate grade possible. To go through these calculation options no, uh, one by one, option number one is the number of high scores. So this option will calculate the average of the highest X score. So for example, if you assess a learning target five times and you are taking the average of the highest, maybe two scores or the highest um, uh, one score, you could just take the highest score. Uh, let's say you're, you're taking the highest two scores uh, the second highest score is a three, and the highest score is a four. The student's calculated score would be a 3.5. You want to take the highest score, enter a one in that field, and JMC will calculate uh, the average of the highest one score. So a lot of philosophies say, hey, I'm going to assess this four times throughout the term. I want to know what the highest level of proficiency your student is, and that's what gets reported out to the course grade. 
Probably the most popular calculation option uh, as far as standard base grading is concerned is the most recent scores. So uh, a reason for um, ditching the points and percentages traditional um, method of, of scoring student work in favor of a standard based um, grade philosophy uh, is this principle that the student should learn more throughout the term and what the student is doing at the end of the term should be better than what they were doing at the beginning of the term based on that learning. So um, many philosophies say, well, the most recent indicator of evidence should be what's reported out as the course grade or uh, on the report card. So if I have a, a, a kid that maybe didn't perform so well on earlier uh, assessments, but then through reassessment opportunities, through reteaching, uh, they, they've shown by the end of the term that they understand the skill or concept, I would use that most recent scores to reflect most accurately their course grade. Um, so if you choose the most recent score, the most recent one score, it's gonna take that most recent piece of evidence, or it's gonna take an average of the two most recent or three most recent scores to produce that course grade. Uh, the decaying average is um, kind of a, a blend of those philosophical approaches. Uh, there are some teachers that would say that if I do not, if I'm just counting the most recent evidence, why is the kid going to try on the first three times? You know, they're just going to maybe uh, not put forth their best effort in the first couple of opportunities. And then that most recent one, the one that counts, that's the one that they're going to try on. Well, I have a few thoughts on that. Um, number one would be, you know, why are you continuously assessing the student if you figured out that they understand the thing? So I think once a kid figures out that, you know, hey, I don't necessarily need to be reassessed over and over again uh, over this skill if I've shown that I have mastered it, uh, I, I think kids would probably be more likely to uh, put their best foot forward as early as possible. Um, so that's where that exempt category would come in. But if you're still of the thought that like, you know what, I'm going to assess this multiple times. I want kids to, to try on all of these assessments. I'm still going to take the majority of the, the grade from the most recent. So in this case, I've entered a percentage in here of 90%. So that's this is telling the program that 90% of the overall course grade is going to be the most recent evidence. The remaining 10% is going to be averaged amongst the previous results. So if I have uh, five assessments, if I'm formatively assessing a standard five times throughout the term, 90% will be the most recent score and 10% will be an average of the remaining four scores. Again, it's a blend of philosophical approaches. It's not my favorite, but it's an option that is available. And I've seen um, some folks use it effectively. And if it works for you, by all means, do it. Uh, the fourth and final calculation option is the proficiency target, and this is used in conjunction with that targeted proficiency that was added to the proficiency scale. So um, some standard based uh, practices include the philosophical approach that students should be deemed proficient at the end of the term if they have met a targeted proficiency a set number of times on formative assessments throughout the term. So you place a check mark in the proficiency target checkbox when creating that proficiency level or proficiency scale uh, to identify the targeted proficiency level. Then when utilizing this option, you'd enter the number of times the student must meet the targeted proficiency in the calculation options box to determine the proficiency. The summative course grade or the standard assessment will calculate to the targeted proficiency once the student meets it. If the set number of proficiencies have not been reached, the calculated result is an average of the attempts. So um, kind of just explaining the difference in how I would maybe utilize some of these. Um, for, for English, as, a, as an English teacher, some of my standards lent themselves um, more to different calculation options. So. I had some, some analytical standards or some, some research-based standards. Well, if the, the overall um, analysis is the standard that I'm assessing, the, that analysis should improve with instruction. So I'd use the most recent scores 
um, to uh, assess those analytical standards. But I would use the proficiency target um, to calculate um, standards that might be uh, a little bit more procedural. For example, um, spelling, sentence structure, grammar. I always assess that. So every time a, a kid handed in a paper, I was always assessing their spelling, sentence structure, and grammar. And I wouldn't necessarily expect a kid to be perfect on those things, um, but I would expect that over the course of a term, they would be perfect at least X amount of times. So if they're getting 10, 10 opportunities, you know, with all of the revision and the editing that goes on, I would expect them to be proficient at least three times. And if I could, if they were proficient at least three times, then their proficiency was um, at, at the highest level. That's, that's how I would use maybe a combination of these calculation options. Um, nothing really to take a live look at on those, but um, if you have any questions, please shout them out. Uh, again, this is in the bottom right hand corner, and this is when you've when you're adding a formative assessment. Each formative assessment has its own calculation method. So, ask questions about data to determine factors. Uh, let's see here. I, I'm going to assess that using the the most recent scores um, because you know. I, I'm, I might give them feedback along the way. You know, I might give them three assessments and be giving them feedback, but the most recent one is the one that's gonna matter as far as I'm concerned. That's their end product. Not seeing any questions. So we're gonna move on to giving that feedback. So scoring formative assessments in the CBG module. As Rick Wormley says, students can learn without grades, but they can't learn without timely descriptive feedback. And that is the purpose of the competency grades based grading module is to eliminate the barriers to learning associated with scores and percentages and get students to focus on the learning. So the big key here is once a student sees a point value on an assignment, that assignment is done. And the, the learning in a sense is done. There's a, there's a lot of research that contributes to that. When you provide feedback using points or percentages or grades, the student sees the end result and they assume that learning is over. Well, if you're formatively assessing along the way, you're showing them the journey and you're giving them the feedback and they see that end result is, all right, I want to be meeting. And if I see that I'm developing, 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 what do I need to do to increase that proficiency? So it's not a finished product that you're working with. And it instead gets students to focus on the learning rather than maybe point accumulation or uh, dwell on grades and, and scores, which can actually stand um, in the way of their learning. So now that you've set up your proficiency scales and defined your standards and your learning targets, you're now ready to use the competency-based grading module to provide feedback to students to move learning forward. Head to competency-based grading, score formative assessments to get started. Step one, you'll select the course from the courses drop-down list to access the standards for that course. Step two, select the standard from the assessment area drop-down list to access the learning targets associated with that standard. And then step three, you'll select the formative assessment from the formative assessment drop-down list to give students feedback on that target. Fun fact, students' names will appear in an assessment grid along the left-hand side with the number of opportunities along the top here. And if you double-click one of those assessments, you can enter a description and add a date for, spe for a specific assessment opportunity. So um, I'm assessing a student against a standard and I might do that in a group project. I might do that in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I might do that as part of a portfolio. I might do that as a part of a paper that the student's writing. Um, I think the biggest change in how you would grade using competency-based grading is um, we're not necessarily entering the opportunity up front. We, we know we're going to assess it X amount of times, and then we're describing what that assessment looks like here, because the overall result is where the kid is in relation to the standard. I'm not so much concerned about the condition in which I assess the student. I wanna see the progress of the student on the standard. Uh, I can certainly note in here how I, how I determine that, but, um, and that's what the description is for, but the overall um, focus is going to be the student's proficiency on the standard. 
Um, you'll enter the assessment result in uh, the drop-down list. So you select the result from the drop-down list to add a level of proficiency to the student. And this is where I really like this module compared to the points and percentages. So um, as a high school English teacher, you know, I'd write up a paper, maybe create a rubric, and I'd have to go through the rubric and score it. And then I would have to add the score and that score was somehow supposed to reflect the proficiency. Well, well, here, you know, I've got, I've got X amount of proficiencies, four, three, two, one. I select it from a drop-down list. And if most of my kids are at four or three, I can utilize um, some tools like the score note and the autofill. So if I've got a kid that is not proficient, I can enter right in here in a score note um, what that kid needs to do in order to show their proficiency for next time. So um, it acts almost as a learning management system here as well. So families can see this in the family portal. Students can see this on the student portal. So they know what they need to do uh, to increase their proficiency for next time. And I have a note right here in my grade book that shows what the student showed me uh, the previous attempt or what I need to focus on the next time I assess the student. Uh, like I mentioned before, this fill score column note uh, this, this feature over here on the right hand side, I can select a result here, click this fill score column link, and it will automatically populate all of the results um, equal to the one that I had selected. Then I can come in here and just add the two or three that might be a little bit different. Um, I find that personally effective for um, pre assessment data. You know, most of your students are probably not going to get it uh, during the pre assessment. You know, you, you can give that feedback right there with one or multiple students using that fill score column. Uh, another, um, I would say this is a, a benefit of the CBG, despite what a student has shown me throughout the term, I'm not bound by a calculation result. I can always manually override a calculation option by clicking on this, uh, this result column at the end and um, select, I can select the result that actually most accurately reflects a student's proficiency on a standard. So if I had a reassessment opportunity and that kid showed me beyond this summative, beyond this most recent, that they did know exactly what they were talking about, I could come over here and I could bump that result. Um, a check mark will automatically display in this checkbox indicating that I have manually overridden the score and I can remove that check mark from this checkbox and it will go back to the calculation method that is listed here. Step five, I click that publish button to make the feedback viewable in the office on progress reports in JMC student and the JMC family portals. So let's take a live look at scoring formative assessments in the CBG module. So a couple different ways of accessing I can go over here and go to score formative assessment or score, score formative assessment by student. Um, the difference is I'm, I'm just looking at an individual student uh, over here, or I'm looking at my entire course list. Or I can go down the menu tree and go to score formative assessment. You can see I've got my course and my assessment area asks questions, defining problems. My formative assessment, this is a standard that I am formatively assessing ask questions about data to, turn, do, to determine factors that affect the strength of electricity and magnetic factors. Okay, so my first assessment, I double click on this and um, maybe this is, I'm just gonna call this my first attempt. And I might be using the interactive whiteboards to collect my evidence. And I can come in here and I, I'm going to date this, and this is the day that I'm doing this on, and it, it'll it toggle, toggle this, or it'll sort these in the order of uh, the date, so I can come in here, and I know I'm going to do a second check, so I'm going to put that in here right away, so second attempt, and this will be my exit ticket. I'm going to do this, you know, after a week of instruction or so, and then my third attempt might be my summative, and this will be um, maybe my in-class writing. In-class. I'm gonna do this a week later. So here we go. So you can see kind of the path for my assessment. So uh, my my first attempt, I could see that none of my students were um, they they were asking questions 
but they weren't the right questions. Maybe, um, maybe they, they were not questions that were leading to the factors that affect strength. So in my, according to my, uh, rubric, that's at, uh, you know, a beginning of uh, proficiency level. So I'm going to mark that as beginning. And I'm going to mark that for all students because almost everybody was in there. So fill score column. And there might be a couple of kids that, you know, junior, he just, he, I don't know, he didn't even write anything. So I didn't have, uh, I had insufficient evidence. I couldn't say one way or the other. But one thing that I noticed for everybody is, we, they were all asking questions, but they did not get to uh, the determining factors. So I'm going to add a score note in here, and I'm going to say, asked questions, but next time, let's do a better job of relating the questions to the data I'm trying to collect. Actually, you know, I'm not trying to collect it. They are trying to collect it. So I'm going to say we are trying. And I'm going to give this to all students because everybody, oops, it didn't like that because it didn't have, not everybody had the same result. So I'm going to add this, add this score note to little Tommy Freed who, um, Maybe needs to show more work so I can determine. Let's see. I'm just going to mark this for this student. So now it'll show up with a little star next to little Tommy's name. That's indicating that there is a score note for Tommy. And that's going to show up uh, on JMC family. It's going to show up in JMC teacher um, and on JMC student as well. Um, I published that. Now families can see it. I'm gonna add a few more records in here. Maybe the second time around, you know what? Most everybody's showing that they got it. So I'm gonna fill score column with everybody showing that they got it, except for junior who's you know, getting a little bit better here. And I don't necessarily need to reassess any of these other folks. So I'm going to fill that score column with exempt. And this is, you know, notice my, my calculation method then is the most recent you can see for junior. And let's say he did need to be reassessed. So by the time I reassessed him, he's got it. So I can see his path to learning. He can see his path, path to learning. Um, and, and I can use these uh, calculation results this uh, exemption to show that the student either did not need to um, attempt this or that they did and they're now meeting. So a couple different ways that you can use that. I'm gonna publish that, yes. And now let's take a look at some of the reports. So um, actually, I think I showed this in my formative but I want to show you what, uh, one of the reports because I think these are pretty slick. So this is a, a score formative assessment by student. Oh, I'm sorry, reports. Formative assessment report by student. There you go. And I'm going to select all. And this is what your families would see in JMC family or JMC student. Um, these are also great pieces that you can take to data team meetings. So if you're wanting to assess students, um, against standards or maybe compare their results on standard-based tests, you can bring your formative data and it shows the standard, it shows um, where the student is um, in relation to your learning goal, and it will show each of the attempts um, that they attempted. So, and, and it also shows my score note right down here. So I can email this um, result to um, families if I wanted to use uh, this um, formative assessment report as kind of a either a midterm report or maybe my weekly, um, you know, status for my students. So just wanted to show that that quick formative assessment report. I also have a, an assessment grid. I don't think I have much data in here, so this might not show anything too spectacular, but 
let's run it and see what we get based on what I put in there. Um, so it shows all of my students on um, the different attempts. So you can see, you know, this is the standard and everybody are, this is where everybody was on assessment one. This is where everybody was on assessment two. This is where everybody was on assessment three. I've got my mean, median and mode. So this would be a nice thing to bring into a data dig as well. So those formative assessment reports are really, uh, can be really handy for um, those, those formal data digs that you might do uh, during in-service. So with that, Without seeing any questions, um, that concludes our uh, six ways of grading for using CBG to report to a course grade. Um, coming up here in JMC tomorrow, we've got uh, online family re uh, registration part two, a collection review. We have another six ways of grading on the 23rd. Uh, this uh, I'm showing you how to uh, use CBG to track formative uh, assessment results for feedback purposes only. So if you're a special education teacher or uh, some schools report out on behaviors through CBG, but they just do it formatively. So it doesn't count towards a course grade, but it still gives us um, those data collection points um, that we're after. That might be something that you'd like to tune in for. Um, on the 30th, we are going through the traditional points and percentages to calculate to a course grade. Um, the 31st, we've got the top five summer to do's. And then the sixth, uh, our final installment of the six ways of grading moving forward with JMC's grading solutions. I'll be joined by Sarah Freed and possibly Paul there to, to talk about and reflect on the six ways of grading in JMC. And then on the seventh, how to manage your message settings in JMC family. Are you interested in learning more uh, about how assessing student progress can reflect the unique needs and philosophy of your school district? JMC has six innovative solutions for your school's philosophical approach to standard-based instruction, assessment, and grading. JMC's standard-based grading tools have you covered. Uh, check this out, uh, check, us, check us out on YouTube. Check out our uh, six ways of grading. Um, playlist and you can see all of that, all of the stuff that we've talked about and um, all of the different grading options. Um, you could also reach out to uh, one of our uh, reps or one of our trainers to find out which solution might be best for you. What's the best way to train your new JMC users? Let the JMC training team do the heavy lifting for you. This is also a great opportunity for those who aren't new to JMC, but will like a refresher. From June until October, we'll cover JMC foundational skills and demonstrate time-saving tips and tricks. The first webinar is Wednesday, June 28th at 1230. Love to see you there. In addition, uh, we've got our summer conference um, coming up in Minnesota on August 1st at the Twin Stadium, uh, which is going to be fantastic. Target Field, I'll be there. I'll be wearing a baseball uniform, hopefully. And uh, we'll also be in Ankeny at the FFA Enrichment Center on August 4th. Uh, if your school sends the most uh, people to our conference, you will win a pizza party for your school. And you'll also have the most chances at winning one of our awesome raffle prizes. So we've got some cool stuff coming in. Super, super excited about our summer conference. Uh, check out our Eventbrite page to register today. Just go to Eventbrite and search JMC uh, to find those summer conference opportunities. They're also on the, the home page on your JMC uh, uh, site. So it's been me by myself and it's been a pleasure. And I hope to catch you later on uh, the next installment